Kreuzer Baub, welcome everyone to uh, talk about uh, North Wales Wildlife Trust's a Swift Recovery Conservation Project. North Wales Wildlife Trust is a network of wildlife trusts across the UK. Uh, we've got over 6,000 members and we manage 36 nature reserves across North Wales. If you have any questions about the presentation, um, please do get in touch either through our website or you can contact me directly at rob.booth at North Wales Wildlife Trust. Dot org dot uk. So I'm going to talk about our SWIFT project. And here's the bird itself. Um, it's one of my favourite birds and they're fully adapted for life on the wing. Uh, I don't think any other bird is adapted for life on the wing as much as the SWIFT. It's an African bird. Um, we sometimes call them our swifts, but they're only here for sort of 12 short weeks during the, the spring and summer uh, to take long, to take advantage of long midsummer days, hopefully pleasant weather, and hopefully skies full of insects. And then after 12 short weeks, they're gone. It's I always find it a bit sad when when the swifts leave. Um, you'll, you'll not have seen them for a few days and, and they're gone again for another year. But these birds um, are really birds with amazing superpowers. Some quick facts for you. Um, Swift can spend the first two or three years on the wing without landing, which is quite remarkable. Um, they, do it, they do everything on the wing, um, mating, eating, drinking, raindrops, uh, quite remarkable birds and swift by name, swift by nature. Um, one was recorded at doing 69 miles per, per hour at, uh, in level flight. Everybody knows that peregrines are known as the fastest bird, but that's in a stoop, in a steep dive. Swifts are actually um, the fastest recorded bird in level flight, so just under 70 miles an hour. So yes, they can eat, drink, preen, mate and sleep on the wing. They eat airborne insects and spiders, mostly at sort of 50 to 100 meters um, altitude. Um, they sleep at sort of 10,000 feet altitude um, using thermals and um, similar to dolphins, they do unihemispheric slow wave sleep so they can switch off half their brain uh, and, and still remain relatively alert um, and rest that way. They can drink by catching raindrops in the air. And the longest, the, the oldest uh, known swift um, lived for 21 years. Um, and in a lifetime, a swift has been, uh, a swift is likely to have covered up to about 4 million miles, which is pretty remarkable. Eight times to the moon and back. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Um, they can get over a thousand insects in, into their bolus, into their pouch in their, um, when they're feeding. And when feeding young, can gather up to about a hundred thousand insects per day. One um, satellite tagged swift uh, flew from London to Frankfurt for lunch, came back and was back in the evening. Pretty remarkable birds, I think you'll agree. So, in terms of identifying swifts, um, there are a few similar species. So you can see here the swallow on the left and swift on the right. Close up like that, it's quite easy, but um, usually you don't see, see them that close up, obviously. So uh, look out for the, for the swallow who's got um, the white underbelly, red chin, and longer tail stream, longer and thinner tail streamers. Um, the swift also known as um, sailors used to call them the anchor bird. And I, from an ID point of view, I think the anchor shape uh, you can see on the right is, is really distinctive. So that's the swallow silhouette. Uh, sorry, that is the swift silhouette, but, um, I beg your pardon. And that is a swallow silhouette so it doesn't have this uh, it's much straighter wings um, and it doesn't have that sort of sleek swift swift silhouette so swallows and martins um, 
are passerines, um, which means they, per they can perch. Um, as I explained earlier, swifts don't perch, they, they just spend all their time on the wing. Um, so if you see a bird perched on a, on a wire or in a tree, then it's definitely not swift. Um, it could be a swallow or a martin, most, most likely. Um, this is a swift nest. Um, a cup, it's actually a cup has been provided here to, to help them, but uh, because they're so committed to the sky, swifts, um, they, they can't build nesting material in the traditional way using twigs and whatever. Um, so they just, they just gather what material they come across in the air, things like cobwebs, wisps of hay, the odd feather, and stick them together in the nest site using um, spit. So you may have heard of bird's nest soup, which is basically a relative of the swift, the cave swiftlet in Asia. Um, that's made from the spit of uh, swifts, believe it, believe it or not. They only ever have, from conservation point of view, they only ever have one brood. Um, so unlike multi-brooded um, species, then from a conservation point of view, if that brood fails, they, they don't have the time or the energy to, to do it again. So um, they are quite vulnerable in terms of their conservation for that reason. They're a so very sociable bird. They tend to nest semi-colonially, not too close to each other, but fairly close, safety in numbers. Um, the first year birds will take part in what are called screaming part, uh, parties and form pair bonds. Uh, Swiss generally pair for life, but they won't breed successfully until uh, the age of three or four. Um, prospecting birds who are looking for nest sites may bang the nest entrance with their wings, provoking the resident birds to scream from the air from the entrance, and many will fight over uh, nest sites. So this isn't a load of swift, this is a time-lapse photography, but it gives you an idea of um, how graceful they are when they, when they fly. They, when they're prospecting for nesting sites, they'll fly at um, the height of the, the surrounding buildings, checking out sites and calling. And the resident swifts will respond from the nest entrances saying, basically, go away, this is our, this is my nest. And it's the, the sound that you hear on films and TV when people want to convey somewhere in the city um, with old buildings. I was watching a, a, an episode of Killing Eve recently that was set in Rome and I could hear swifts uh, screaming in the background, it was quite distracting. And here's the sound for you. distinctive, I'm sure you'll agree. So in terms of their nest sites, um, they did use to, to nest in cliffs, um, particularly down in Pembrokeshire. There are, there's evidence that they did that in Pembrokeshire. Um, and in tree cavities, some people may remember, recall an episode of Spring Watch, I think it was a year or two ago, where they showed some tree nesting swifts in the Caledonian forests uh, in Scotland. Um, but now, in, and particularly in Wales, they almost exclusively um, nest in buildings, cavities under eaves, soffits, behind fascia boards, under roof tiles or cracks and gable ends. Um, most often they nest in older buildings. Um, two thirds of Swifts nest in buildings over 100 years old. Um, they tend to have more natural holes. Um, so things like churches, public buildings, that sort of thing um, can be good for, for swift nests. And they tend to be a, a sort of suburban bird, usually in villages or towns, rather than isolated buildings in, in the countryside. And they also tend to like, although this is not a strict rule, they tend to like to nest above five meters off the ground. Uh, the eggs can survive chilling and the young can go into torpor to survive poor weather. Um, 
and swift chick feathers do go, grow quite slowly compared to other birds, but they are built to last. Those feathers do last longer than in other birds. Um, they tend to take about six weeks to fledge, um, and the young will do press ups um, in, when they're in the nest uh, to stretch their wing muscles prior to fledging. The average clutch is two or three. Um, the clutch size can vary according to the weather in the, the second half of May. Um, and note on the, pale, on the forehead of these juveniles that these pale feathers will be lost in adult plumage. They also have very large eyes, they hunt by sight and are often active well into dusk. So you can see here, these are swifts emerging from swift boxes. Um, note the stiff, stiff wings, splayed forked tail and tiny legs. Um, the Latin name for them is Apus Apus, which literally means footless. And you can see in these pictures, you can't see any evidence. They, they do have them, but they're, they're, they're very, very small. Um, swifts need to be able to fall out of the nest entrance before flying off. They can't jump. Um, like like most birds. So if you do find one on the ground, they do say it's best to give them a hand by throwing them up in the air, but uh, I would wear gloves for that because they are, they are known to, to carry a lot of ticks. And there's one of them for you. <laughs> you don't want too, too many of those on, uh, on your hands if you do have to pick up a swift. So now the bad news. Um, Swifts are disappearing, um, and this is the reason why we're doing this project, uh, a swift recovery at North Wales Wildlife Trust. And there are lots of other um, organisations involved in swift conservation across the UK. Um, the recent breeding bird survey issued by uh, the British Trust for Ornithology, BTO, um, has said that basically since the mid-90s, since 1995, Swift numbers have declined by 72% in Wales, 72%, which is um, the biggest decline um, of any bird species in Wales in that time. What are the reasons? Well, one of the main reasons we suspect is that there are fewer flying insects in the air for, for their food. So um, the effect of pesticides and the overall loss of uh, habitat diversity um, is is probably the cause for that, the old, the old story really. Um, there was a study done in Germany, a well publicized study done in German nature reserves a couple of years ago that showed that um, the biomass of winged insects on nature reserves um, in that study had dropped by 75% and that's undoubtedly having an effect on um, swift populations and other birds of course and bats included. Um, but what we're concentrating on, and well, the, the work that North Wales Wildlife Trust generally does for pollinating insects um, is, is helping that, but it, it is a bigger story that, uh, that, uh, that uh, needs addressing. Um, what we are trying to address is um, finding out where swifts are nesting and possibly protecting them and giving them new nest sites. So in terms of finding nest holes, um, they're a very tidy bird. In fact, the adults actually will eat the fecal sacs of the chicks in the nest. So pretty gross, but um, they are very tidy birds. Um, unlike house martins and swallows, where you'll see a pile of droppings uh, on the ground. Often with swifts, you'll only see this, these streaks of um, droppings below the nest hole. Um, this was a school actually in Wynvaud and was below five meters height um, and these droppings alerted us to a possible swift nest site. And here are some uh, examples of swift boxes that have pr been provided. Um, they have to allow the swifts to fly up and in from below. Um, so the hole needs to be slim enough to make it difficult for starlings. 
um, but there is also competition with house sparrows um, and I'll talk a bit about that later. Um, but you do need to choose a nest site very carefully. So if there are trees in front of the house, for example, or electricity cables that prevent the swift swooping in and out, then it might not be um, suitable to put a swift box on your property. Here's a couple of uh, styles of exterior box and we can provide um, the designs for these if you want to make them yourselves and they, you can buy them off the shelf as well. Um, quite a few companies now um, are building them out of different materials and I'll talk a bit about Swift Bricks shortly as well. So there's the design. Uh, the hole is big enough to exclude starlings um, and we're able to uh, remove it. We, we do have a design here where, where this is provided, um, the roof is provided in white, which uh, keeps the box cooler if it's in a, a sunny position. So here are the Swift, what we think is possibly a, a better longer term solution are Swift bricks. Um, and here's an example of a company that do make Swift bricks that um, can either be retrofitted into buildings you know, instead of breeze blocks or, or a series of bricks need to be taken out. Um, the advantage of these obviously is once they're in, they're in forever. Um, the disadvantage with the wooden boxes is that, you know, they, they will, um, even if made out of marine pry, will um, rot and degenerate uh, after about 20 years. So if you can, if you've got a building project going on, then uh, think about installing swift bricks rather than external boxes. Again, we can provide um, advice about these and uh, hints and tips where to go. So installing them, um, again, it's not difficult, but uh, obviously it does, does involve working at height. So do take care if you are installing um, uh, or get an approved installer to, to put them up. Um, generally, you want them out of the sunlight, uh, direct sun, and the, eaves above five meters um, without any obstructions in front um, of where the, the um, swifts can go back and forth, fly in and out. And the project has been really successful in terms of engaging the community. We've, um, we've got a number of people, uh, quite a few volunteers already through the project who are keeping an eye on their local swifts, but are always looking for for other SWIFT champions who are willing to do that and uh, advocate for SWIFTs in their local community. Um, so if anybody does want to get involved, do please get in touch. And unfortunately, it's not always the SWIFTs that, that take in to, I mentioned earlier that uh, sparrows, will, house sparrows will um, take, take up residence in SWIFT boxes. They need a house too, don't they really? But um, uh, there is some evidence that swifts will actually um, bully the sparrows out of their nests um, and that has happened in, in certain circumstances. It does help actually to play the swift calls that I, um, that I played earlier um, and that will attract the swifts to swift boxes if you're putting them up on your own property. So here are a few resources. Um, there's obviously our website and go to the uh, Swift Recovery um, page. Um, there's also on Covnod, who are the local environmental record center, they have a web, pe web page where you can put your records, which I'm gonna talk about surveying in a second. Um, so you can go to Covnod and there's a specific page on Covnod. It's very easy to uh, put your records in. And also I mentioned about the sort of national uh, conservation if you're interested in more what's happening nationally, then you could go to the swiftconservation.org uh, website as well. So in terms of survey te techniques, this is one, as well as asking people to put, put up nest boxes, we're really keen that um, we find out where swifts are nesting in North Wales. And this is where maybe the first stage of where you can help us now that swifts are returning to the UK for this season. The best time to survey for swifts in the UK is early to mid-July um, in terms of 
pure numbers, but you can be looking for um, the screaming parties and the nest holes already. Um, if you see a, 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 a swift coming out of a nest hole, um, then it's pretty good. It's, it's evidence of breeding and it's a good record. So you can do this from now. But in terms of pure numbers, the best time in the UK is early to mid July when the population is at its biggest enlarged by juvenile swifts who fly into Europe uh, from Africa much later from, than the adults. So the juvenile birds are coming back later in the season because they're not breeding yet. In other locations where the dates of swift presence may be earlier or later than with us, then you should survey the swifts sort of two to four weeks before they leave. Um, after that, numbers will diminish as they start to migrate south. The best times uh, for doing surveys are for two hours after dawn, and for two hours before dusk and generally a warm or hot and dry day is uh, in terms of weather is the best conditions. So what we would like you to look for are swifts flying round and round buildings and long streets at just above rooftop level and below like in this picture um, and doing the screaming calls that I that I played earlier that will show um, shows that there is um, there are nests nearby. If you just see a, a, you know, swifts very high up feeding, then they're not likely to be breeding in the local area. So we'd, um, we'd like you to record the screaming parties and the nests in particular. So in terms of technique, um, what we would say is to walk slowly around the areas where there are low flying screaming swifts and count the circling clocks until you have an accurate estimate of the number of birds in flight. You might need to do this several times as they're very fast flyers and their crisscrossing flight paths can be very confusing for the observer to, um, to disentangle. So you can listen as the swifts pass the buildings and if there are answering screams of swifts still in their nests, then please add those um, to the total number that you record. You may detect their nests either as the swifts enter or leave them and at just at dusk and shortly after when the adults return to spend the night with the chicks. Maybe you could organize a, a local swift walk um, when restrictions are, are um, eased uh, and do it in small groups. Um, but it is something you can do on your daily exercise walk at the moment. In terms of actually um, putting these, getting these records on, I mentioned Cognod in the previous slide. Um, this is their webpage, cognod.org.uk. And then you go to the Swift Recovery page and just follow the instructions there. It's very simple um, to enter a record once you've registered and got a password. It only takes a few minutes and that information will get back to us securely. There's the actual page where you put the records. There's a useful um, button here. To, if you don't know the grid reference of the location, then you can use this interactive map to zoom in and you can get very accurate um, grid reference. You can even put in an address or um, the name of the building or the church or whatever that you've recorded your Swifts. Uh, you can put the notes in there and obviously dates and everything else is self-explanatory. Um, at North Wales Wildlife Trust, we've also got uh, a dedicated Facebook page called the Swift Recovery, Ad Vera Gwenelia Dion. Um, please do give us a like and uh, there's tips and contacts there that you can uh, get hold of us and um, yeah, just uh, get involved. So a few of us at the Trust um, have become fairly obsessed with swifts. Um, we spend lots of the time with our, our crick in our neck looking up. Um, but they're, they're a beautiful bird and um, we, we really, appreciate, really appreciate your help in um, doing what we can to, to conserve them. So thanks very much for listening to the talk and uh, please do get in touch.
with any questions you may have and help us to help SWIFT. Thank you. See you.